Hello friends, welcome to Houseplant Tips and Tricks. My name is Nick and today we're going to be propagating this variegated monstera. This series is sponsored by repotme.com. Get all of your indoor gardening supplies delivered to your door from one place. Repotme.com has practically anything you need for your orchids, succulents, and houseplants, including handmade potting mixes, planters, fertilizers, and much more. Since variegated monsteras are such a hot commodity on the plant market, I really wanted to hone in on specifically how to propagate these today in case you have one at home and you want to turn it into more than one plant like I'm going to be doing today or maybe you have a friend with a variegated monstera who might just be kind enough to share a little piece with you. And of course with a plant that is not as easily replaceable as a golden pothos, I want you to be able to do this successfully on the first try. So as you can see with my specimen that I have right here, it is not the most beautiful specimen on planet earth. I will be the first to say that. We've got four leaves up here at the top of the stem. Then we have some bare stem with some nodes that don't have any leaves attached to the stem. We have this one random straggler leaf down kind of halfway down the stem and then a couple more bare nodes working its way down to the soil. So my game plan today is that we are going to take a top cutting of these beautiful few leaves that we have up here. We're going to turn that into a brand new plant. And then we're also going to mess with these single node options down here. I think we are going to leave the plant with this one leaf on it just because I personally find the most success with chopping my plants. When I do leave a leaf on it, I find they can be more likely to rot if there is no leaf on the plant. Is this leaf a looker by any means? No but I think it's going to save us possibly losing our plant. If you don't have any leaves to work with and you're just going to be leaving a bare stump, that is absolutely fine. You just really need to keep in mind the watering and the lighting of this plant going forward until it does get some nice new growth on it. There is just a little bit of plant anatomy that we're going to go over before we go ahead and get started. You are of course familiar with the leaves, I would hope so at this point, and the stem, the main stem being the central trunk that your plant's growing on. But there's a couple more terms we need to know. We need to know the petiole. The petiole is the stem that connects the leaf to the main stem. This is all just the stem to us, I'm sure, as novice gardeners. But this part right here that connects it all the way down to the main central growth stem, this is called the petiole. Then there's also the nodes. So the nodes are quite easy to find on a monstera, especially compared to some other house plants. You can just follow these aerial roots. You can see they're coming off my plant all over the place. We just follow these aerial roots back to the stem and there's a very clear notch in the stem the main growth stem that is where new growth would be coming out and where the roots would emerge from. And then last but not least, there is the internode, which is just the space in between the nodes, just that stem part that's just got all that fun variegation on it with this plant in particular, but just that main growth stem where there are no nodes, that is called the internode. When it comes to propagating your plants, specifically your variegated monsteras, the node is detrimental. There has to be some of that node on your plant cutting in order for there to actually be new growth and for your plant to sustain itself, create roots and create new leaves, most importantly. Although the leaves, the petioles, and the internodes are obviously very important parts of this plant as a whole, the nodes are the only part you really need to worry about when it comes to propagation. That being said, there can be leaves, petiole, and internode on your plant cutting. It's just if there is no node, there is no plant cutting. In the future you basically just cut off some future garbage. There's going to be two different kinds of cuttings that we're going to be working with today. We're going to be taking our top cutting which is going to include all these beautiful leaves. That is a cutting that once it roots and we can get it planted in soil it is going to look like a full plant ready to go, instant gratification, but we're also going to take those single node cuttings which might be something you might be more likely to be dealing with if you are perhaps getting a cutting from one of your friends so you might need a little bit more patience and they do require a little bit extra care so when it comes to taking this top cutting we're going to find the lowest leaf of the four we're going to follow that petiole all the way down to the stem we find that beautiful aerial root which connects to the node and i think we're going to actually going to go one more node down from there because there is that beautiful leafless node which is going to be the one that we can have submerged in water the stem itself being in contact with water is totally fine i would just try to avoid petioles and leaves petioles are less likely to to rot than leaves. So if you got to do it, you got to do it. It's totally fine if you're working with less plant. But if you can get a bare node or two down into the water or whatever potting medium you're using to propagate your variegated monstera, you're going to have more success in my experience than if not. So we're going to go down right to that exact spot I showed you in the close-up, probably about half an inch to an inch below that first bare node. We're going to take our pruning shears from repotme.com and we're going to go ahead and do a clean cut right in the dead center of that internode. We've made the cut. There's no going back at this point, although I'm much happier with the way that this, this couple of leaves looks than it did hanging out at the top of the stem right here. 
And while Monstera deliciosas are pretty easy plants to propagate, I want to be positive this thing grows to its fullest potential. So instead of potting it in any soil mixture or something like that, I'm going to put it directly in water. So I'm going to fill up this jar right here about halfway with water, making sure that at least one or two of my nodes are completely submerged in the water. We're going to let that sit. We can change out the water every week or two if we need to, if it's looking dirty. In a couple of weeks, we should have some really nice looking roots on this plant. Keeping in mind that I cut this in the growing season, so if you're doing this in the winter months, I probably would wait until the growing season as those roots are going to take much longer to grow as well as that new growth. And I should have mentioned if your aerial roots are too big to put inside a planter or your vessel, whatever you're going to be propagating your variegated monster in, feel free to cut them back. You can cut them back as far as you would like. That's where the roots are going to actually come out once they are growing in the water. This seriously looks so cute. As you can see in my close up, there is two of those nodes completely submerged underwater and I think that's going to be perfect. Every once in a while, I encounter inactive nodes, nodes that just seem like they don't want to root or they're taking way, way, way too long to root that I just do not have the patience for it. So I would recommend having at least two nodes submerged into whatever potting medium or water you're using to propagate your plant. Like I said, these plants are kind of hot commodities, so I really want you to have the best success when propagating these as you possibly can. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and try out some single node cuttings. Single node cuttings have gotten a bad wrap in the past, basically because people were just selling them irresponsibly online for way too much money or perhaps not actually including any of the node at all. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna give you a little closer up because I can only get one shot of this and I only have one camera. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to just cut in between the internodes once again, or in between the nodes in the internode. So in the dead center, probably about an inch between both of these nodes, which is the safest spot where we're not going to be damaging any of the spots where the roots or the new growth can be coming out. And we have another one above this leaf right here. So we can go ahead and take this. If you're worried you have too much internode, like this is like an inch and a half right here. I really don't need all of that. In fact, that could possibly cause it to rot easier than not. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove another half an inch off this internode right here and leave us with a nicer, more appropriate sized piece of plant. When you are working with pieces like this that do not have any foliage on them, they're not gonna be photosynthesizing clearly nearly as much and rotting is much more likely. So in order to stave that off, I have a little tiny bowl of cinnamon right here and we're just going to take the cut ends, basically the exposed open wounds of our plant and we're just going to dip them in the cinnamon. This is not going to help the plant root. Cinnamon is just an antibacterial, is that the word? So it's going to help keep away any rot or fungus problems that could happen with just this being this little sad little stick with no leaves on it. I would discard the cinnamon. It is not edible anymore now that it's gotten the calcium oxalates from the stem of our plant, the reason why your pets can't chew on your Monster Deliciosa or they will have to go with the vet. So get rid of this. And we are going to do two different types of potting medium for our little single node cuttings here. We're gonna do one with some soil mixture, which repotme.com already has a mixture that is perfect for Monstera Deliciosas that I've used in the past with my other Monstera Deliciosa and I love it, so I know it's gonna be perfect for this variegated Monstera. So that's what we're gonna use today to attempt to propagate one of these single node cuttings. And then I also have some sphagnum moss also available from repotme.com. I'm going to link all the products that I'm talking about from repotme.com in my description below. And if you click through any of those links and make any purchases, I will earn some commissions. So thank you very much in advance. And you can use code Nick to save 10% on any potting mix on repotme.com. So I just have some nursery planters right here. I was struggling to find some good sized nursery planters. This is the only decent size one I could find. I also have this little one right here, which I know it's too small for propagating Monstera Delicio, so we can just cut back this root a little bit and go from there. Maybe use a slightly bigger planter if you are working with these plants at home. They just root up so large. I'm gonna have to figure something out down the line, but if you're working with small planters at first, it's not a big deal because your plants don't really have any roots on it. So what's, what's the harm done there? None. I think I'm going to do the sphagnum moss in the smaller planter right here, and then let's do the soil in this larger planter. I wouldn't recommend going bigger than a four inch pot when propagating Monstera Deliciosas. 
can you have success? Absolutely. I just want you to have the best success when you're working with such a holy grail of a houseplant. So since I have this stick just perfectly right here and these nodes are pretty equally sized to this bamboo stick, I'm going to just take this bamboo stick down into this soil right here, creating a little opening for me to just stick this node down safely into it. Make sure that it's in contact with the soil, but not necessarily underneath the soil. It's just sitting inside, but that node is fully submerged. It was like a two inch node, so it must be going down almost to the bottom. That is the most important part to be in contact with the soil, the water, the sphagnum moss, what have it. So since this root is a little too long for this planter, I am going to cut it back a little bit. Like I said, it's totally fine. I think I'll cut it back halfway. And since I just made another open wound on this plant, I could cinnamon it again, but I actually have some rooting hormone. Figured that can't hurt to help our plant make some roots quicker. I could have even put rooting hormone on that root, but it's not the biggest deal in the growing season. Once again, just using this stick to make me a convenient little spot to stick my root down into. And then just pushing down to make sure that that root is completely in contact with the moss, but keeping our little stem outside of the moss. It's looking perfect. So my moss is already moist. I pre-moistened it before I got it in here. This is I normally do before I'm working with moss. My soil is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and water this in shortly as soon as I'm done my video. I was thinking that we would do a little experiment with these single node cuttings although there's not really a control because they're both in different potting mediums, but I figured we will put one of them inside a clear plastic bag to kind of promote a terrarium setting. You could even put it inside a terrarium or a greenhouse cabinet, what have you. I could even put this inside my greenhouse cabinet and not have a Ziploc bag around, but I just kind of feel like this right here is a pretty controlled environment, just having it by itself. So I can leave this somewhere well lit under a grow light or by a window. I don't want to put these directly in the window if it's like a window with direct sunlight, but they can be near the window. You know, your variegated monsteras do need more light to photosynthesize compared to your regular monstera deliciosas. So I am filming this at the beginning of July. This is my set project for Houseplant Tips and Tricks in August. So we are going to check back in probably about a month and a half and see how things are going. And maybe we can go ahead and repot something then. You will see in like that amount of time. But for me, it's going to be a month and a half. So I will see you then. Alrighty friends, it has been a full month and we are back to check on our variegated Monstera propagation project. So we have our four Monsteras here, but spoiler alert, I do not think we actually have four Monsteras to work with. So we have the cutting that we took right here that we have in the jar of water and you can see that there are a lot of roots, actually a couple of the nodes, I think, one, two, three, even four nodes actually are beginning to root. So we'll talk about what the possibilities with that will be in a moment. We have the original plant right here that we had cut back and you can see it still has that original leaf that wasn't looking so hot, but we have a new leaf emerging right here. This leaf is not going to be very big and not going to be very developed, but of course, as each new leaf comes in after the fact, those leaves are going to become larger and more developed and hopefully we're gonna get some of those splits that we're seeing on this cutting right here on this plant. What I'm thinking down the line, what I'm going to do with this one right here is after a couple of leaves grow in here and are looking nice, I'm going to cut this back even lower, propagate the top just as I did with this, and start the whole process over again. I'll just have to cross my fingers or just give it a little extra care and attention since it's not going to have a leaf, even an ugly leaf on it, to work with to guide some of that energy towards whatever it's doing the magic that's happening when it's creating a newer plant or more plant. So these two right here, total successes, the top cutting and the bottom cutting or the original plant, I don't know what we call it, but the two single node cuttings that we took cannot say that they are as much of a success as these. So the one right here that we have in soil that was kept outside of a plastic bag is completely rotted at this point. The whole thing is black and I'm sure if I just pull the thing out, it's, yep, no roots. That root nublet, aerial root that was on it originally is looking sad and shriveled. This is, at this point, garbage, unfortunately. I did 
put this inside a little greenhouse contraption that I have in my bedroom, full disclosure. So it was kind of receiving similar situation to the one that's inside this plastic bag here, but this one was definitely getting more humidity than the other one that I can see clearly with all the condensation that's accumulated inside this bag. This one still is green and looks like it has some life to it, but I don't think that's very much life to it. It's not looking very promising at this point. If I pull this plant out, Yes, no roots on it whatsoever. So I think this one is going to be meeting its demise just like this one right here. So save your money. Don't waste however much money, even if it seems like a good deal on a single node cutting of Monstera Deliciosa. Is it possible to grow them out from a single node? Absolutely. I'm just showing you right here firsthand that maybe it's more worth spending a little extra money on an actual plant with roots and leaves. So let's get rid of these. We don't need them anymore and focus on the good stuff right here. So we're not going to mess with this guy today. We are just going to leave it be. It's going to probably produce one or two leaves before the end of the growing season. And then I can think about cutting it back come next spring when the plant starts to spring into action again. But this guy right here, I do not want to leave inside this water for much longer. We have a really good root system forming here. A month is a good amount of time to propagate something, especially during the warmer months. So before the growing season is over, like I was just saying, let's go ahead and pot this up. I really would like to plant this inside a plastic nursery planter, but unfortunately I do not have any on hand that are of appropriate size for this. So we are going to plant it inside a terracotta pot, basically the exact one that it was living in before, just slightly smaller. I think everybody would agree with me that an Alba Monstera just looks very charming inside these dark terracotta planters. It really is a match made in heaven with these variegated leaves. We have a fresh bag of the Imperial Monstera Deliciosa potting mix from repotme.com. This is perfect for anybody with a Monstera Deliciosa that needs to be repotted, but they don't feel like going out and getting all those big old bags of soil amendments to add to their standard soil mix to keep their plants as happy as possible. So before we go dump in this soil in our pot all willy-nilly, let's just get our plant out of its glass container. Let's take a nice good old look at those roots. They have some really nice roots on it. You can see this top node is even starting to root, but all the three other ones also have a good amount of roots on it as well, which leads me to think that I could, if I really wanted to, cut this plant back somewhere below, and we already have technically two rooted sections of this plant ready to go. The reason I'm not gonna do that today is because of the rotting that we experienced with our monster Deliciosa Albo in soil with the single node cutting, but it was just those open wounds in the soil. Just It's not making me feel too good about that today. So I'm sure it would be a successful project, but I just want 100% success when it comes to this top cutting here. I'm not willing to risk it at all. And maybe at the same time that we cut this one back next year, we can cut this one back as well, and then we'll have four cuttings, and then we can pop them all together, and then we'll just have a big old Monstera Deliciosa Albo variegata plant to just lust over. So let's pop this cutting out for a mo, and we will open up our bag. I of course have my spoon handy, my favorite gardening tool, and we'll spoon in probably about a half an inch of soil into the base of this planter, just to give those lower roots a little foundation to sit on. Get it situated somewhere that all those roots are gonna be submerged underneath the soil, and it's looking good, so let's just go ahead and fill it up. One of the reasons why I kind of rather would have potted this up inside a plastic nursery planter instead of this terracotta planter is because those plastic nursery planters hold onto moisture a little bit better than terracotta planters do and they breathe really well. So terracotta planters do breathe really well, but they dry out really fast while the plastic nursery planters are gonna hold onto moisture a little bit better and that's better when a plant is first, you know, coming from water into soil. Dry soil can really dry out those water roots. They're similar roots, but they're not exactly the same as the ones that are gonna be growing inside the soil so they do have to adapt. So for the time being, we do want this plant to be subject to a little bit more moisture than we typically would, not as much as so to overwater it or waterlog the leaves, but just so that this plant can adapt over as healthily and easily and stress-free, of course, as possible. Give my pot a little spank. Make sure there's no air bubbles left inside this planter here. Also can take your fingers and just go firmly around the perimeter of the planter and make sure that it's all decently packed down, not heavily packed down, but just packed enough that it's not just gonna fall down when you go ahead and water it. And of course, we're gonna need to water the plant. I'm just gonna use the water that I have right here in this jar because I just changed it out a couple days ago, so I don't see any harm in that. But we wanna give this plant a really good soaking. We definitely wanna see some water coming out into the water basin as it is right now. 
but this is looking fabulous. Looks a lot better than its old self that we have over here, of course, in due time. This one's gonna look just as good, but there's just something about chopping off those good, fresh-looking leaves at the top of a plant and potting them up into its own planter that just feels like a, a real fresh start, a new beginning. And while it's remotely sad that those single node cuttings did not make it, I am still thrilled with what we are left with this project because it looks way better than it did before and I'm feeling much better about my Monstera Deliciosa Albovirogata at this point than I was a month ago, that's for sure. So I'm going to put this in a bright, humid place. I'm gonna keep this guy where it was before. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that'll be the new life of this beautiful, variegated Monstera Deliciosa. Super easy to propagate, super easy project, just takes a little bit of patience. And when it comes to those single node cuttings, maybe a tad bit of luck. But that's gonna do it for today's video, how to propagate a variegated Monstera Deliciosa. Thank you to repotme.com for sponsoring this series. I will leave any of the products I use from their website linked in the description below. Thank you again for joining me. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.